Hey guys, in today's video we are going to be focusing on weapons. So uh, yeah, recently a couple of you have approached me with very specific questions on weapons and robots and uh, for a very good reason. With the recent changes to Workshop 2.0, it now takes a lot longer to produce components for the items that you do need. So you know, why would you want to invest your time, your silver and your gold into a weapon only to find out that it doesn't really work in higher level play. So I'm hoping that this uh, video will guide you in the right direction. I'm not going to be focusing on robots uh, this uh, video because otherwise it's just going to end up being uh, way too long. So uh, make sure that you do stay tuned for that. That's going to be in another video uh, later on. But I'm going to be going through the entire list here. It is a very long list and they have not included the Halo, Corona and Glory. So I will be commenting on that as well. Uh, but before I get started, a couple of things that I should mention as well. So I've been playing this game for four years now, a very long time. And uh, one thing that I have learned during that time is that weapons are king. So, you know, why do I say that? Uh, weapons are what do damage, not the robots. So make sure that you do focus on the right weapons and you upgrade your weapons first before your robots. And uh, another thing too is uh, weapons tend to weather the storm more so than robots do. They have a longer shelf life. Uh, if you take a look at the evolution of this game where we go from like the Rhino meta to the Lancelot uh, meta and then you have the dash and the spectre in all these cases the robots change but the weapons somewhat remain the same so for example i used to run a rhino with tyrans and uh, magnums and then when the lancelot came out and the galahad came out i just moved that from my uh, rhino to you know the galahad and the lancelot and the same thing happened uh, with the dash and the spectre so uh, that's kind of the reason why you need to focus on weapons first Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, I'm going to be going through the entire list here, weapon by weapon, and giving you, uh, you know, my opinion on it, and whether I would actually uh, get it, first of all, and whether I would upgrade it, uh, you know, based on the current meta, if I had to start an account from scratch. Okay, so let's get started with the Hydra. Okay, so with the recent update, the Hydra did receive a bit of a nerf. I do believe the interval between shots fired has been lengthened or increased, uh, making this weapon not as effective as it once was. Uh, not to say that it can't do a lot of damage, it definitely could. It could wear you out and can be very annoying and stuff, but uh, in terms of you know my priority list, if I had to again start an account from scratch, uh, there's just better options and uh, the Hydra is not a weapon that I would focus on. So for me, I would definitely say a no to the Hydra. Moving on down the list, we have the Magnum. The Magnum is a very interesting weapon. Uh, it did get a bit of a buff uh, with the latest update. Uh, but what I like about this weapon is that it is very versatile. You know, you can put it on a Griffin, on a Rhino, um, you know, on a Vitya, a Golem, a Hover, or even a Leo. So, uh, you know, just the fact that you can put it on so many different bots and it does actually pretty decent damage, I would say yes to the Magnum. Okay, so moving on down the list, we have the Pulsar. So the Pulsar... I actually tested this before the update and I thought, you know, this weapon actually does quite a bit of damage. You lock down a player, you have 600 meter range and it does a lot of damage. And then they came out with the update and they actually buffed this weapon, which I don't agree with. Uh, but having said that, uh, because I don't agree with that buff, it means that it's powerful. So for me, I would actually go for this weapon at this point in the game. And to run 4 on the Spectre is very deadly. Okay, so moving on down the list, uh, from there we have the Shredder. So I did also test this out on a Strider and a Mercury, and it worked very well. Uh, the fact that they actually buffed this, and it is a lockdown weapon, it is a weapon that I would consider leveling up uh, if I had, you know, obviously no wait times and all the resources, uh, which I know we all would like, uh, but definitely a weapon that I would focus on, and I think it is worth getting, so a yes to the Shredder. And uh, moving down the list, the Tehran. So the Tehran is actually a very old weapon. It's the first, or I do believe it's the first, that was this and the Magnum when the workshop actually was introduced a long time ago. And uh, you would think that it would fade, but the Tehran has actually been a very solid weapon. Um, I ran two on an Inquisitor. I was running four on a Spectre. So a very solid weapon. And uh, for this one, I would definitely say yes. In fact, this would be one of my first weapons I would get and make sure that I have in my lineup as uh, one of my... Uh, priority weapons okay so uh, now we have the trebuchet okay so the trebuchet is also an interesting one but i don't think i would actually invest in a trebuchet because of a number of different reasons first of all 
you know, when you fire this weapon, if you happen to miss a target, you have to wait 23 full seconds if you want to do max damage to that target. Um, you know, why would I want to do that if I have a Flux available to me? So the Flux is the heavy uh, gecko or heavy laser uh, which you can use. But the thing with that one is if you miss a target, you just keep your, or at least should say, take your finger off the fire button and then charge up and then fire again. With this one, you have to wait 23 seconds. So to me, I would not actually invest in a trebuchet. I think it's a waste of resources. Uh, so I would not get this. And my answer to this is no. Okay, moving on down the list, we have the Trident. Uh, so the Trident used to be good uh, during the Rhino era. It was a counter to the Rhinos. Uh, you know, it had, uh, I guess it's glory back then, uh, but now it's kind of faded. And this weapon, in my opinion, is just too weak with the meta that we have out there. It is not a weapon that I would invest in. So a definite no uh, for me on this weapon. Uh, moving on down, we have the Exodus. So the Exodus, I've tested this out on the Inquisitor. Um, I've run it on the Strider as well as the Lancelot, and it was pretty effective. And this was prior to uh, the latest update. Uh, the fact that they actually gave this weapon even more uh, damage potential now, it does more damage, uh, is a weapon that I would uh, say is worth investing in. Uh, a lot also depends on you know what you decide to run uh, this with, but you know, it is a weapon that I would say, yes, I would definitely invest in this. And uh, moving on down here, we have the Dragoon. So <laughs> when this uh, weapon first came out, I actually said it needed to be nerfed down because I could see how much damage it was doing at 600 meter range. And, uh, you know, we sit here a couple of months later and they've actually buffed this thing. Uh, the fact that they buffed it, uh, even after the fact that I said, um, you know, really should be nerfed down, um, tells you the strength of this weapon so to run it on like say a bulwark on a falcon uh, you know on a fury or even an Natasha makes this weapon very deadly so for for you know those reasons uh, I would say uh, yes to this weapon and it is definitely one that I would invest in okay and uh, now we have the ember so the ember is a very interesting weapon because it is the only weapon that can bypass physical and energy shields the only shield that can block this right now in the game is the Aegis Shield. And I do believe there's only two bots that have Aegis Shield. And that is the Bulwark and the Blitz. So the thing with the Ember is, although it can do a lot of damage, and I've seen players run this, uh, you know, on the you know, on the Inquisitor, uh, on the Lancelot, as well as even on the Strider, it is a very effective weapon. So I would say yes to this. The only thing that you have to keep in mind uh, if you're targeting a player that's in the air, uh, let's just say you're firing at a hover and they decide to use their glide ability, it is a lot harder to track with the ember and there's a good chance you're going to miss them. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, it's more for, I guess, firing on the ground rather than in the air. Okay, and uh, now we have the Redeemer. So the Redeemer, I've been running uh, this weapon on my Inquisitor with Tyrants and it's been doing really well. Uh, we have someone in our clan who was running this on a Leo with Magnums and he was doing well. So uh, definitely a very good weapon if you have an Inquisitor, you know, a Lancelot, uh, or I guess in his case it was a, a Leo. Uh, but, you know, it did get uh, quite a bit of a damage buff, actually along with the Ember, both of those weapons got damage buffs. And uh, in this case, I do say that, uh, you know, this is a weapon that I would invest in. Okay, and now we have the Scourge. So the Scourge got a bit of a nerf with the latest update, but that's not to say that it's a bad weapon. The thing with the Scourge is it has 600 meter range and it actually does even more damage the close up you get. So it's kind of like, um, I don't want to say that it does everything because it, it doesn't really do everything, but it covers you from close range to medium range. So if you don't want to have, uh, you know, like medium or long range, uh, this is the weapon to go for. So for me, this is a definite yes. Uh, one of the stronger weapons out there. And uh, moving on to the infamous Shock Train. And a lot of players have asked me about this recently because uh, with the latest update, uh, this weapon got a slight nerf. So uh, now, you know, when the uh, when you fire at a target, it doesn't bounce 150 meters uh, to the nearest targets. It's now only 100 meters. And I do believe that they may have nerfed the damage uh, on top of that. Uh, the thing is... The way that this game is going, you're noticing a lot of uh, suppression robots, uh, you know, robots that can reduce damage, uh, so on and so forth, like, uh, you know, the Falcon, for example. And 
I'm just finding this weapon not as effective. Don't get me wrong, it can do a lot of damage, uh, but I'm finding actually a lot of players moving away from the shock train. Uh, if you do run it, then I think you've got to run like for an inspector. Uh, I've tried it on like a Balkazari and stuff. It's just not as effective as it once was. And it's actually not a weapon that I would uh, personally recommend uh, leveling up at this point. Uh, there are just other better options, uh, cheaper options, I think, than, uh, you know, to get this weapon. So that is my view on this. And I would actually say no to the shock train. And uh, moving on uh, down the list, uh, we have the Tempest. So the Tempest is in a very... Uh, strange kind of uh, range here because now you have uh, Dragoons at 600, you have uh, Tempest at uh, 800, but then you have the Flux, which is very powerful. Uh, so uh, because you have the Flux out there, I don't think I would actually want to invest in a Tempest. So I would not invest in this. Uh, if you have it, uh, maybe if you have two, maybe you could run it on like a Natasha with Molots. But again, it's not actually a weapon I would invest in at this point. So a no to the Tempest. Okay, and moving on uh, down the list here, we have the Ballista. Okay, so I've actually run into a couple of players that have run this uh, on Spectres uh, out there. Uh, the problem is it does actually do a lot of damage and you have 1100 meter range. Uh, very good actually if you run it on a Spectre trying to take out uh, Furies. Uh, the problem is with the way that the meta is shifting now to uh, the suppression bots or bots where they reduce your damage or you have like Aegis shields, uh, the Ballista, I don't think it's one that I would invest in. So, uh, because you could fire at, say, a Bulwark, and then they would just block you uh, with this weapon. Or, you know, if you have a shield ball like a Lancelot, it's just going to hit your shield until it breaks. Uh, but that's going to take a while. So, for me, you know, I, I'm actually going to say that I would not invest in the Ballista because of the way uh, that the game is sort of shaping up to be, and, you know, what kind of robots we're seeing out there. Uh, I don't think I would invest in the Ballista, so a no for the Ballista. Uh, moving on, we have the Thermite. So uh, when it comes to uh, not just the Thermite, but it's the Aphids and the Vortex as well, uh, the thing with these weapons is that uh, they are very effective if you are hitting a target that is still. So you got to th keep that in mind. Uh, you know, if you are going to uh, you run these weapons, I think you need to run lock uh, lockdown weapons, uh, actually, because... Uh, if you're going to be firing at, say, a Stalker or a Dashbots, it's very easy for them to evade these weapons. So I actually personally would not invest in a Thermite, uh, nor would I invest in a Aphid or a Vortex. So the answer for this uh, question here on this weapon, the answer is no, I would not invest in the Thermite. And uh, next up we have the Chimera. So the Chimera, again, is kind of like uh, the Spiral or the Hydra. Uh, you know, it can do a lot of damage, but again, um, you know, you're sitting back, you're not really, um, con well, you can contribute to your team's win, but it's just, I've run two and I've run three of these. Uh, you need three, pretty much, uh, on a Fury. So if you don't have a Fury, then I don't even think I would invest uh, in this. Uh, running one, uh, maybe with Hydras, uh, it might work. Like if you're running it on, say, I don't know, a, an Inquisitor. I've actually seen a couple of players run that. Uh, but they weren't really that in, you know, effective. So I don't think I would actually invest in a Chimera at this point in the game. Uh, no reason for me to actually get it. Again, this is just my opinion. So my uh, answer to this uh, weapon would be uh, no. Okay, and uh, now we have the Flux. <laughs> I just spoke about the Trebuchet. And uh, there are two, you know, main weapons that tend to dominate medium and long range at the moment. Uh, that is the Dragoon and the Flux. But the thing is, if you're on a larger map and there's a Fury Dragoon out there, or even Bulwark Dragoon, uh, they are going to be in a bit of trouble because if you've got like a Fury Flux, uh, you are going to have, uh, you know, pretty much range of them. This weapon has 1100 meters, Dragoon has 600. I mean, you know, need I say more? Uh, this weapon, in my opinion, actually needs to be nerfed down. Uh, you know, just having said that, and uh, if you compare this to the Trebuchet, if you're going for a sniper build, uh, you know, it's better to load up with the Flux rather than the Trebuchet. So for this weapon, I would say a definite yes. Okay, and next up we have the Spark. So the Spark is sort of a light version of the Scourge. Uh, actually very effective. And I think they gave this a bit of a buff. Um, if you run this on like something like a Pursuer, uh, you could even run it on, you know, a Leo along with like Dragoons and stuff. Or even if you put that on a Natasha, 
The thing is, it is a light weapon, it's very versatile and it can do a lot of damage uh, based on what I have tested. So for me, uh, this would be a yes in terms of you know what I would have if I had to kind of do a list of all the weapons if I needed to upgrade stuff. So for the Spock, I would say yes. Uh, the Vortex, so you know, I, I spoke about the Thermite and then the same thing really applies to the Vortex and actually the Aphid too. So for me, I don't think I would invest in this uh, just because of the bots that we have out there and you know what they do. I think if you are going for the Vortex, uh, don't get me wrong, it can do a lot of damage. But if you are going to use this, you got to make sure that the enemy is standing still or they are locked down and then I would use this. But that requires teamwork and uh, you know when you are starting up as a new player, you don't exactly always have a, uh, good teammates. So uh, you know you have to think about that as well. So uh, I didn't think I would invest in the Vortex. Um, next up we have the Arbalest. Uh, so <laughs> I ran this on a pattern and um, you know a couple of other builds. I didn't really like it. Uh, wasn't really doing that much damage for me. I do believe they did buff it. But even with that buff, I didn't really find it that effective. Uh, the answer for this question, uh, you know, would I actually get the Arbalest? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, so definite no for this weapon. And uh, moving on. Uh, down we have the ion so the ion is sort of a medium zeus i've uh, seen this actually being used uh, more as of late on specters and it can do a lot of damage um, for this one although there are other options for me like i think i'd rather run like a scourge or something because uh, it does more damage up close and it also has a 600 meter range i think i would choose a scourge over this uh, doesn't mean to say that it's a bad weapon uh, you know i rather actually run something like this than to run hydras so because of that, you know, I would say a yes to the ion. Uh, it is worth upgrading because uh, of the amount of damage it can do from 600 meters. Okay, and the Ansel. So the Ansel did receive a buff uh, with the latest update. I personally run it on my Hellburner. So I think if you are going to run it on, say, the Hellburner or, you know, the Lancelot with the Ansel and maybe Tyrants or Scourge, then a definite yes. Uh, for the Ansel because it has been strengthened and it can help against uh, splash damage. And uh, moving on down the list to the Zeus. So the Zeus has been around for a while. Uh, the only thing is the Dragoon is better than the Zeus. So at this point I would not invest in the Zeus. If you have it uh, then maybe run it with Scourge or even with Ion. I think it could actually be quite effective. If you're running it maybe on uh, an Inquisitor or a Lancelot build then maybe it might work. Or maybe if you have one Zeus and you have one Dragoon, you could always run it on a Natasha or something. But not something I would put as high priority uh, on my list in terms of upgrading, uh, you know, or even getting for that matter. And uh, next up we have the Storm. So the Storm is a very deadly weapon. Um, I know some players have their doubts about this uh, weapon. I've run it on a Spectre before and it, it, it does a lot of damage. And on top of that... Uh, the recent update they've actually buffed this weapon i've uh, been running this uh, kind of recently i had it on my mender along with gust and it did a ton of damage it really works well and uh, you know it might even be the counter to the falcon because i've tested that out uh, with some clan mates as well and um, you know it running a specter storm can take down a falcon uh, because it can't block you know all the uh, pellets being fired so uh, this weapon because of the strength of it I would say a definite yes in terms of getting uh, this weapon. Especially if you want to do some shotgun builds, uh, you know, like on the Mender, for example, then I think this is a very good uh, weapon to get. And uh, next up, we have the Gecko. So the Gecko is sort of a, it's a light version of the uh, Flux. Uh, you know, it's a laser weapon. Uh, the only reason why I would want to get, you know, this weapon was if I was going to build uh, like a flux gecko on a natasha or uh, the same kind of build on something like a leo i think that is the only reason why i would want to get this weapon so if you aren't kind of getting or building those uh, builds then i don't think i would get this weapon in terms of leveling up because it's just better options out there for me to do more damage so uh, if i was just going to focus on this weapon uh, it would be it would definitely actually not be on my high priority list. I think there's just better options out there. So for me, I would say no to the Gecko. And uh, moving on down the list here, we have the Gust. So uh, the Gust is a very deadly weapon. It is a shotgun 
uh, weapon and I was running it and I actually am still running it on my Pursuer along with Halo and it is very effective. So I think if you're going to run, you know, the uh, Pursuer or maybe the Blitz, uh, you know, one of those or even the Mender, the Gust is uh, very good if it kind of being running with the Storm or some of the other lockdown weapons uh, like Halo or even Corona, it could work really well. So this weapon, I would say uh, definite yes in terms of getting an upgrading. And uh, moving on down, we have the Orkin. So one of the oldest weapons are in the game. And I don't know if this was the first goal weapon, but, um, you know, I got the Orkin because I needed to defend off against like Boa Thunder Orkins. And uh, to this day, I still have it in my lineup. So it, it actually says a lot about the Orkin. Um, it, the Orkin is very reliable. I know that they did uh, nerf it down a bit, but that does not mean it does not do damage. Um, it has that explosive damage, you know, you have that splash damage to take out, uh, you know, certain bots that have physical shields. And, uh, you know, just for that reason alone, I would say definitely get some Orkins. I think every player should um, at least focus on Tehrans and Orkins, at least to have like maybe four of each, um, you know, in their lineup. So this would be a high priority uh, weapon on my list. So a definite yes for the Orkin. Next up, we have the Avenger. So I know a lot of players were complaining about the nerf, or it was actually a slight nerf to the Avenger, but I've run this on the uh, Mercury, I've run it on, I'm trying to think, you know, the, the Strider, I've run it on everything from a Natasha to, um, you know, an Inquisitor, as well as uh, the Falcon and the Bulwark, and this weapon is actually a beast. So, you know, despite the fact that it has been nerfed on uh, a little bit, I actually think that this weapon is going to, you know do really well later on so i think it is worth uh, upgrading i actually have a uh, three which i got and i did upgrade so you know i'm going to probably run it on something like a bulwark and for this uh, i would say yes it is worth getting and uh, lastly we have the aphid so with the aphid you know the same thing applies as what i said to the thermite and the vortex it is not worth uh, upgrading or even getting for that matter uh, because of the kind of uh, environment we're playing in with faster bots uh, unless they increase the accuracy and damage of this weapon it is not worth uh, getting and leveling up and uh, the other three weapons which are not on this list and i mentioned it right at the start uh, that was the halo the corona and the glory so all three of those weapons uh, have been buffed uh, if you want a weapon with the best lockdown uh, potential i would go with the halo uh, first uh, because uh, you know I've run a couple of tests and that thing you know tends to lock down players uh, a lot and you don't need to even level it up to uh, mk2 level 12 I do actually have a live stream where I ran it uh, for a full two hours only at level 10 and uh, players could see just how effective that weapon was so I think I would go for the halo definitely uh, the corona is working really well right now I'm running that um, along with the halo on my mender and those two complement each other really well and uh, the glory, you know, the thing with the glory, although it doesn't lock down as much, it can do quite a bit of damage. So I think, you know, coupling a glory maybe with Orkins on an Inquisitor or something like that uh, can work really well. So those three weapons, I would say a yes to them. And lastly, because we are talking about weapons, I figured I'll go to the store and I'll look to see what weapons I may have missed because obviously not all of them appear in Workshop. So uh, let's take a look at the Molot. Would I invest in the Molot? The answer is no. Uh, unless you're running something like a Natasha Tempest Molot build, then it kind of makes sense. Uh, but in all honesty, there's a lot better options out there. So for me, uh, if I had to start my account from fresh, I would not invest in a Molot. Uh, I wouldn't invest in a Spiral either. I know you can put four on a pattern or maybe even a Jesse or something, but uh, it doesn't really do a lot of damage. It can be annoying, uh, but not a weapon I would invest in so the answer to that is no. Uh, the Punisher can be a very interesting one because I've actually run this uh, along with the Avenger on the Natasha and it's been very deadly. So I think this one it really depends on the build. Uh, you could also run it on uh, say something like I don't know uh, Mercury or maybe uh, you know a Leo. So in that case it may actually work really well if you combine it with uh, the Avenger. So this one, I think it really depends on the build. So this one, maybe. Taking a look at the pin. Uh, the pin is not something that I would really invest in at this time. I know some players do run 
uh, the grip in with Columbus and Pin, and that can be pretty deadly actually in the lower levels of play. But as you start to work your way up into Champion League or the higher leagues, uh, you're going to find players using more just Columbus on a Spectre, uh, which is far more effective. So if you do go this route, uh, don't level it up all the way and just be mindful that you will have to eventually move over to the Columbus. Uh, the same thing really with the Panata. A lot of players, you know, start off using this maybe with the Leo, but as they climb uh, the leagues, they kind of transition from the Panata to straight up Orkins. So uh, not a weapon that I would invest in heavily, and that goes for both of those weapons. And uh, moving on here, the EQ Shield. So many of you know that I like running the Hellburner with the Ansel and the EQ. Uh, the EQ did actually get, you know, a bit of a buff. So uh, in that case, if you are going to be running that build uh, for the Hellburner, then uh, the answer to, you know, whether I would upgrade this, uh, the answer is a definite yes in that case. So it really depends on the build. And uh, looking at some other weapons here, the Noricum. So many of you also know that I used to run the Pattern Noricum, and this is recently. I never actually ever thought I would run the Noricum, but if you do play Team Deathmatch, um, it's a great weapon for flashing out the enemy. And I've actually seen this work alongside uh, with Dragoons if you're running it on a Natasha. So it really depends on what your build is, um, but it's a lot deadlier now with 1100 meter range and also minimum range of 300. It does quite a bit of damage and it can flush out the enemy. Really annoying to deal with, especially on larger maps and, uh, you know, team deathmatch, for example. So this one, uh, really a maybe, depending on the build you're going. I don't think I'd run it on Beacon Rush, though. So I think that covers all the light weapons. Uh, let's go to the mediums, and then I'll go to the heavy afterwards. So the store, and uh, let's take a look at the Punisher T. So I've actually run this uh, with the Lancelot along with Avengers, and it did really well. So again, it really depends on the build you're going for. Um, I think uh, this Punisher T could actually be quite deadly if you ran it even on something like an Inquisitor. You know, if it works on a Lancelot, it probably works on an Inquisitor. And with the Inquisitor, you have the stealth too. Uh, in fact, I think the other day I actually got shredded up by this, uh, someone who was running this weapon. So in that case, uh, would I level it up? It depends on your build uh, once again, but uh, this one I will say maybe. Molot T. Don't bother using your resources on this. Um, like the Molot, um, it doesn't really work in higher levels of play. It might work in the lower levels, but as you work your way up, uh, you are going to find that you have to transition out of uh, this weapon. So don't spend a lot of resources on it. And, uh, you know, that's what my thought is on that. So uh, for this one, a definite no. Uh, to Lumbus, this one's actually a really good weapon. I've been running this on a Spectre as of late, and it has a lot of damage. So I think um, if you plan on getting a Spectre, you know, one of the cheaper weapons that you could uh, invest in and actually level up and have it work is the Tolumbus. So for this one, a definite yes. And I'm just going through the list here. I think I have covered actually everything. And uh, let's go back and we will cover the Heavy. Okay, so moving on to the Heavies, we have the Nash Horn. Would I invest in the Nash Horn? The answer is no. There's just way too many better options out there. And uh, yep, that's pretty much you know where I stand with the Nash Horn. So the answer to that is no. Uh, the same thing with the Thunder. You know, no to the Thunder. This weapon, I don't understand how the Gust and the Storm can do more damage than the Thunder. Um, I'd rather invest in Avenger or uh, you know a Glory, which has the ability to lock down the player. So uh, would I invest in the Thunder? The answer is no. Uh, the Kang Day, same thing as uh, you know the Nash Horn. I would not invest in this weapon um, you know if you're going to be going for like medium to long range uh, rather go for something like a dragoon or a flux uh, i think that would serve you a lot better in the long run uh, the answer i think i did talk about uh, if you're going to be running a hellburner or a lancelot then uh, a yes for that zeus not a weapon i would invest in uh, you have the dragoon which is just better than the zeus uh, why get the zeus if the dragoon is better so same thing you know, go for the Dragoon. If you want more range, go for the Flux. Um, let's see, I think... Oh, we have one more, the Zenit. Uh, I would not invest in the Zenit. Um, it might be annoying. It might be kind of cool looking when you fire those rockets. Uh, but in all honesty, you know, it doesn't really work in a team deathmatch unless you have, you know, high level Zenits and you have three of them, then it kind of makes sense. But we're talking about very map specific here and also game mode. 
So uh, not something I would invest in, so a definite no for that. And I think that covers uh, pretty much everything. So I hope this video was uh, helpful for you guys in terms of guiding you in the right direction in terms of you know what you're going to invest in. And uh, hopefully I've saved you um, a lot of silver and gold in upgrade costs as well as time uh, so that you don't waste your resources on stuff that uh, doesn't work in the highest level of play. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, consider subscribing. Until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.